Hi. <laughs> I know, it's Friday, and I think we have to tackle sexual guilt. We're getting oh. a lot of questions about sexual guilt. Okay. Why do we have sexual guilt, Betty? Because of the culture, because, because of organized religion. They deny the body. This is, everything about the body is negative, and it's suspect, and you should not do anything that makes you feel good. I remember thinking that as a child, and I just thought, why do I always have to feel guilty about things that feel so natural? Well, eventually you know. most of us figure that out, and we say, I'm, you know. But it's a process. We were talking about that earlier. It's, we didn't come out of the box like this, just no, so you no. know. This oh, is no. a lot of work. Hard, hard work. Decades of work. <laughs> so first thing, one of the first things that, that connected for me is that guilt has no benefit. You don't learn from it. You don't progress. You don't get better no. from it. What it does is... It consumes you to the point where you don't have to grow, you don't have to give it any major thought. You're paralyzed, and I think that's the whole thing of fear and guilt. Paralysis, is this, exactly. If we accept those things in, their, in our lives, it's limiting ourselves so that we don't have to. Feeling guilt becomes an, uh, an end in itself. In itself, and so we don't have to challenge ourselves and move through something. Now, my technique, and then you, I think you have one similar. I do, I have a yeah. Okay, or the one I did is that I feel guilt coming up, and I'd say, oh, I don't do guilt anymore. I don't do it. I don't do guilt anymore. So just shut down your brain. Like, and oh, I, I can't I do this. Throw it away. You put yours in a box. For some reason, I would imagine a blue box. Tiffany's blue. I don't know if it's Robin's egg blue. <laughs> Tiffany's jewelry doll. And when I would imagine pulling the thought, I was having the guilty thought out of my head, putting it in the box, Perfect. and then putting the lid on it. Perfect. And it was like, every time I thought something, I was like, I'm not going to let myself think that. Yeah. It was no. a, so what we're saying is that we actually can control what we think and how much time we spend thinking about it. We can control our thoughts. The mind does not run everything. The, it's the same thing when you're getting rid of an addiction. It's like yeah. when I stop smoking. You're overriding that. Yeah, yeah, so the desire to smoke a cigarette would come up and I'd say, oh, I don't do that anymore. Is that like, I don't eat those foods. You know, I don't spend time with that person. It's like when you break up with someone and you want to call them for that booty call and you're like, no. And you take their number out of your phone, you're like, I don't do that anymore. I don't call that person anymore when I'm horny. They're bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> exactly. Bye-bye. You find something new. <laughs> so just so, so that the mind does not run the show. It doesn't. We think it does, but it doesn't. We can, we can control our thoughts. And follow your intuition. And I think that's what I was always trying to do as a young woman. It was like, I want to follow this. What you feel. What I feel. And right now, I don't want to feel guilty. But I remember feeling guilty because I could never be monogamous when I was a teen and oh, in my 20s. Monogamy. And I would be like, I have this great boyfriend. Why can't I just be with him? Why am I out with him and I'm looking at someone else getting turned on? What's because wrong with me, Betty? You're a slut. <laughs> <laughs> and Yay! I used to beat myself up about it. I used to be like, all oh, my girlfriends, as long as they have one boyfriend. So I'm young. I wanted to experience life and different people. How can you know what you want unless you try different oh, you, things? You were way too young. I was too young to be monogamous. And I think that we ask too much of our, our of kids. You know, we should, and, and ourselves, we should let ourselves make mistakes. That's how you grow. And you always talk about every time you did a body sex group and you went to a group sex party, you would start sweating. Oh, talk about fear. <laughs> I li and I, get, I finally said, I've got to make friends with fear. It was everywhere. I love that line. I've got to make friends with fear. And, and when I really grasped that was my first exhibition. What are people going to think? A woman who's drawing pictures of men and women having, having sex. sex. That's pretty hardcore <laughs> in 1968. And, <laughs> and I was the model for all of them. And you're putting yourself out there, a sexual presentation of self. I was actually doing drawings of my sex life. I, now, I changed the faces, and so I don't think everybody got it immediately. I, but you can see it. But I knew, you know, and it was like, so I said, I've got to make friends with, so every time I'd feel, oh, my friendly enemy, fear, hello, yeah. here's my friend, da, 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 da. And you can make friends with fear. And I got to the point where, if I wasn't scared out of my wits, at least once a day, <laughs> I wasn't sure I was alive. Or challenging yourself. Constant. So I, I think the question is, what kind of life do you want? What kind of person do you want to be? Because we, you have to create it. Yeah. We can, we can design our lives like you design a room, like you design your outfit. It's all about what you want. So if you want to get rid of guilt, just every time you feel it, I no longer do guilt. Mm -hmm. 
Or I love your blue box. Yeah, but take the thought out of your mind, put it in a box, put the top on it, put it on the shelf, you're done. That's it. Done with guilt. Take control.